Hello, friends. Welcome to Rocket House Radio and another program. This is one of my favorite series, and the idea came from Joe Morris, who's also the presenter. I'm just going to read out the opening announcement, and this is what was said on the radio. How lovely it is to immerse oneself in the make-believe world of Alice in Wonderland. But behind the amusing characters and weird happenings, there lurks a nightmarish, hysterical quality. Thank goodness real life ain't like that. Or is it? Presenter Joe Morris has focused on five aspects of Wonderland and has discovered Alice is alive and well. In today's Curiouser and Curiouser, Joe finds herself in the company of five six-year-olds who have all been invited to the tea party of Kate. Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and of having nothing to do. Once or twice she'd peeped into the book her sister was reading, but it had no pictures or conversations in it. And what is the use of a book, thought Alice, without pictures or conversation? So what's your name? My name's Kate and I live in Edinburgh. I'm having a tea party today. And what are you going to do? Eat up all the food without letting my friend have even a nibble. <laughs> I've got five friends coming. Alice had not gone much farther before she came in sight of the house of the March Hare. There was a table set out under a tree in front of the house, and the March Hare and the Hatter were having tea at it. A Dormouse was sitting between them, fast asleep, and the other two were resting their elbows on it and talking over its head. Hi, Rebecca. Did you jump around a lot? Yeah. A bit of rabbity. Are you a bit of rabbity? What's a tea party? Um, so where you have tea. Amy's a bit nutty. What What does she do that's mad? Well, she goes like, ah! When they saw Alice coming, they cried out, No room! No room! No room. No room. No nonsense! There's plenty of room. I shall sit at the end of the table. Here. Is she a bit bossy? Very bossy. It's time for tea! Time for tea! First you can eat your biscuits and chocolate. Shall we start? Grab luck, guys! I don't like the biscuits. I think this is going to be the worst tea party I've ever been to. Why? I don't know. There's no one telling jokes. Then the March Hare said, Have some wine. I don't see any wine. There isn't any. Then it wasn't very civil of you to offer it. It wasn't very civil of you to sit down without being invited. I didn't know it was your table. It's laid for a great many more than three. All this time, the Hatter had been looking at Alice with great curiosity. At last he said, Your hair wants cutting. You should learn not to make personal remarks. It's very rude. Did you know that Rebecca used to eat, I think it was, cat food? No, I did it. It was my brother. Did you know that? Did you know that, did you know that Rebecca fancies no. a girl? And Rebecca fancies a girl in primary one called Rebecca. Anyone want a cup of tea? <laughs> Shall I pour? You Kate's <laughs> showing off her yeah. armpit. I have had enough of these girls. Off with their heads. Amy picks her nose. <laughs> yeah, she really does. She eats it. And she thinks it's so yum yum. I can put it on her fingers. My, bro my uh, brother picks his nose my, and then puts the burger in his mouth. Very I'm rude. I'm my nose on my towel. Uh, uh, I want my nose on my dolly blanket. Uh, uh, I, call, uh, I call for my mum's head. Who are you? Why is a raven like a writing disc? I believe I can guess that. Do you mean that you think you can find out the answer to it? Exactly so. Then you should say what you mean. I do. At least, at least I mean what I say. That's the same thing, you Not know. Not the same thing a bit. Why, you might just as well say that I see what I eat is the same thing as I eat what I see. You might just as well say that I like what I get is the same thing as I get what I like. 
Oh, you, you might as well say that I breathe when I sleep. It's the same thing as I sleep when I breathe. It is the same oh. thing with you. thing you've ever said about someone? I never make personal remarks. Bummy. <laughs> you just call me bummy? <laughs> Just before he went mad, you know. He pointed with his teaspoon at the March Hare. It was at the great concert given by, by the Queen of Hearts. Who thinks I am bossy? <laughs> <laughs> so you've got four oh, people. Rose. <laughs> I think my hands up for biscuit bossy bits. Twinkle, twinkle, little bat, how I wonder what you're at. Up above the world you fly like a tea tray in the sky. Twinkle, 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 twinkle. twinkle Can't you stop the dormouse? Twinkle, Only if I pinch him. Twinkle, then pinch him. Twinkle. Well, I'd hardly finished singing the first verse when the Queen jumped up and bawled out, he's murdering the time off with his head. How dreadfully savage. A man lived in a bungalow. Everything was yellow. What colour were the stairs? There was no stairs. A man built a wooden car with wooden wheels. It wouldn't go. How did Captain Hook die? A man picked his nose with the wrong hand. You all know the song Tragedy. Yes! Oh, quick, 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 quick. <laughs> It's always six o'clock now. Is that the reason so many tea things are put out here? Yeah, that's it. It's always tea time and we've no time to wash the things between whiles. Then you keep moving round, I suppose. Exactly so, as the things get used up. But what happens when you come to the beginning again? Suppose we change the subject. I'm getting tired of this. What are you, Kate? A girl. Are you sure about that? Yeah. How do you know you're a girl? Because I can sing Barbie Girl. I want to have a statue in Edinburgh. Why? Because I'd be famous, so I'd have a statue in Edinburgh. And what would they do at the statue? They'd bow and sing and say, Kate, Kate, beautiful Kate, 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 oh, pop star baby, Kate, Kate, beautiful Kate. Oh, Katie is the wonderful girl. I vote the young lady tell us a story. I'm afraid I don't know one, said Alice, rather alarmed at the proposal. Do you think one should eat a dormouse? No, they're disgusting. Then the dormouse shell, they both cried. Wake up the dormouse! And they pinched it on both sides at once. The dormouse slowly opened his eyes. I wasn't asleep. I heard every word you fellows were saying. My name is Madeline. Do you think you're quite mouse-like? Mm, what did you say? Do you think you're quite mouse-like? Do you think you're like a mouse? 
Um, a bit. In what way? What? In, in what way are you like a mouse? Um, um, kind of squeaky. What's a tea party? Um, I'm not quite sure. Um, I feel sleepy. The Dormouse is asleep again. He poured a little hot tea upon its nose. <laughs> of course, of course. The, 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 just, just what I was going to remark oh, myself. The Hatter turned to Alice again. Have you guessed the riddle yet? No, I give it up. What's the answer? I haven't the slightest idea. No, no, I. <laughs> you all go like that, Madeline. What, what does she go like? Oh, Madeline's a bit shy. No, I'm not. Shy. Here she is. Come with me, Madeline. Right. Where's the teapot? Oh, there it is. Madeline, no. <laughs> I don't want you going there. Tell us a story, said the March Hare. Yes, please do, pleaded Alice. And be quick about it, added the Hatter, or you'll be asleep again before it's done. <laughs> I've always wanted to be a grown-up. Why? What's so good about it? You get to do whatever you want and boss your children around. I think I'd be like the Queen. Alice did not quite know what to say to this, so she helped herself to some tea and bread and butter. I don't know what a tea party is. What did you come to today? A tea party. I enjoyed the tea party today. I would love to live in a world where there's tea parties all the time. You'd get to wear whatever you want and your mummy would not know what you had to eat. Because if I eat anything that's got E numbers in, then I never ever get to sleep. Even if I'd have a tea party to still go to bed because I hate bed, but I hate sleeping. What I would like to do in bed is just play or sleep all winter. What do you think your mum would say about that? Where's my daughter? <laughs> I want a clean cup, interrupted the Hatter. Let's all move one place on. Would you like to live in a world where there were tea parties happening all the time? Uh, not exactly, because there'd be a lot of racket and you might get lots of headaches. So we did quite a lot of talking. Uh, you'll get really bored of it, just going to one and say, oh, I have to go to the tea party, and I have to go to another. So, it's going to be boring because you're probably going to be sick because sometimes you might have tea and then you might have a tea another time and you're just like, oh, I'll be very sick. One tea party a week would be just right. Alice did not wish to offend the Dormouse again, so she began very cautiously. But I don't understand. Um, where did they draw the treacle from? You can draw water out of a water well, said the Hatter, so I should think you could draw treacle out of a treacle well, eh? Stupid. Do you make personal remarks? Um, sometimes, actually, yes. Do you know anyone who says chop your head off to you? Yeah, my boyfriend does. Yeah. Well, Amy didn't mean it, and I didn't no. mean to say that Amy picks her nose. I actually do pick my nose and blow my, and blow my, and blow my nose on my fingers. This was more than Alice could bear. She got up in great disgust and walked off. It's the stupidest tea party I was ever at in all my life. Just as she said this, she noticed that one of the trees had a door leading right into it. That's very curious, she thought. But everything's curious today. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. The next episode is all about the trial. And what we've done is we've got people who are caught up in ridiculous trials, which actually became very, very serious. The absurdity continues. What I'd like to do now is take one aspect from the programme and talk about it, a kind of making of. 
please don't feel you even have to listen to this. I have mixed feelings myself of making ofs because it can take away the magic, which I'll try not to do. What I was attempting to do in the program is create a series of moods, and there was one mood in there that I was particularly pleased with. When I make programs, I really work just by intuition. So when I was listening to Kate, she wants to have a statue of her put up, a great statue and everybody to say, Kate, Kate, wonderful Kate. I thought that was very touching to do with a child's invisibility within the family. But also it was somehow quite poignant. And that's why I used the elegiac music behind it to create this feeling of a kind of um, a yearning, uh, trying to reach something that's out of reach. There's something very pointless about big statues. And they're the sort of thing you would get in Alice in Wonderland. Anyway, a few thoughts there. Bye.